You guys, I'm waiting for Dan to, hey, I'm waiting for Dan to um, get our food from Loving Hut right now. So, and it is freezing in Arizona right now. Like, like Kenya, I know you're watching and I know last night that that storm was ridiculous. Like I thought our RV was going to tip over. It's been, it was the windiest I've ever been ever. I know Loving Hut. I'm so in love with Loving Hut. Um, hey Faz. So I really quickly, I wanted to talk to you guys about the whole cold messaging thing, because I know that, um, there are people that do it. There are people that don't do it. I'm one of those people that doesn't do it, but I'm going to explain why I don't do it. Um, so Hey Heather, um, so, uh, oh, thank you for the hearts. Um, so the reason that I don't do it, I'm going to just tell you my secret. My secret in this business that I have, I have done since day one is that I talk to people, even if I've just met them for literally five seconds, I talk to everyone like they are my best friend. Now, if you can look at your Instagram, for example, and look at your captions and Go through your Instagram, see your captions, and if your caption doesn't sound like you're talking to your best friend, then you need to change it. Um, and again, this is just my suggestion uh, based on experience. Now, I know that there's there's people out there that do the cold messaging, um, and they don't they don't care what I'm saying, or there are people that don't do it, and you know, either way. Um, I could tell you this though, when I go on Instagram and I see people's profiles that have in their bio, um, it works people stay away or it works distributors. I don't want any of your stuff. Like that's a big problem. Um, that's a big deal because, and that's, I mean, that's like really, really giving a bad name for distributors in general and our company. And it's, it's really frustrating because I never see like, you know, unique stay away or Amway stay away. It's always, it works. And it's because for whatever reason, forever, however long ago, some distributor leader, I don't know who started this whole, Oh, it's great to cold message. And the thing is with cold messaging, it works. It does work. Otherwise people wouldn't be in sales and they wouldn't do it. Right. It works by sheer volume. It doesn't work by sheer relationship and building that, that network of people. So if you want to continue cold messaging, um, again, I am not about it. And, and I hope that you heed, you know, my, my advice and all of that stuff, um, as, as a team leader, but I can only give suggestions, you know, I can't make you do things, but if you choose to still do that, um, just remember that it's all about your volume. Um, you know, when, when I tell people that, if you do the Instagram method that, that I give you guys on, on, in our group and you literally don't have to reach out to anyone, they kind of feel like, um, it's too easy, right? Like this sounds way too easy. Like I feel like I'm not working if I'm not reaching out. And Dan, actually, we were talking about this last night and Dan said the people that cold message in it works are, I think that they're doing it because they are feeling you know, because they're trying to be proactive. And, um, he made a really good point with that because it's true, you know, like people feel like if they're not reaching out, that they're not working their business. Um, but in the same respect, if you are reaching out too much and you're doing it the wrong way, um, as far, as far as cold messaging goes, you're ruining it for your business. So that's why, um, I haven't done a Periscope in forever and I've been thinking about this for a long time because so many people um, message me and they ask me, you know, how do you feel about cold messaging? How do you feel about this? And like I said, I will always give my personal opinion on it. That doesn't mean that everybody has to follow it. Um, you know, you will always find your like strong focus point in this business, um, whether in this business or another business. But for me personally, and I try to teach this to you guys, um, I don't believe in it. And like I said, if you can go through your, someone likes to post on Facebook, I add them on my list so I can interact more. Yes. Yes. Correct. <laughs> um, but if you can go through your Instagram posts and look at the captions and see if, if you would write that to your best friend. And if you would, awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. If your caption doesn't sound like you would write it to your best friend, then you need to change it up. Um, and again, I'm going to repeat this again because I always say this, you need, and it sounds like I'm being a boss and that's not what I'm trying to do, um, suggesting. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I was at the mall yesterday and 
like Dan says about don't be a kiosk and it's so so true um, and it's not even just kiosks it, it, it's salespeople in general I was at the um, every like is a lead rule actually uh, I'm really glad you asked that question um, I will get back to that in one second but we were at the mall and I was looking for shoes or a bag or something for conference right and um, I just literally walked in to the department store and walked over to the rack of shoes and within seconds somebody was like on me like white on rice like just like how do you need any help with anything and I'm like you know what like I'm like no I'm good thanks and it's just and then they kind of circled me like a shark and I'm like what are you doing and it was so and it just reminded me of what he said and it reminded me of you know when people like our photos um, and then we kind of jump on them which is probably why they have in their bios like stop you know thank you for the hearts um, you guys are like heart crazy today I love it um, so uh, it just makes me happy hearts make me happy um, so it just reminded me of that and it made me so turned off like I didn't even want to deal with these shoes like I didn't want the shoes I wanted to go somewhere else to get the shoes I didn't care if they were the nicest shoes in the world I didn't want them just because of how I was approached and because in my mind I'm like look I'm a grown adult like I know if I want shoes I'm gonna ask you for help I don't need you coming up to me and you think that that like salespeople would realize this by now but they don't um so yeah that has happened more times than I can tell you and every single time now because Dan mentioned the whole kiosk thing it's so true and it just reminds me of of you know how we run our business online um, you know and like I said cold messaging will work by sheer volume okay and the amount of work that you put in with cold messaging you're not gonna see the return equal by any means and I'm I'm being honest with you like I have yet to ever see that happen or hear of that happening especially in this business so that's why I'm just trying to like you know steer you guys away from um, you know going down a path of by volume yes I can't explain that um, by the amount of people that you're trying to reach by cold messaging you will absolutely get um, sales possibly even distributors um, or interests and things like that but it will be because you're contacting you know so many people in one time frame um, so that's why I say like yeah the people that are calling like telemarketers for example they will get people for sure um, but they're calling you know hundreds and hundreds of people a day um, you know I actually was a telemarketer for two weeks I quit uh, when I was like 18 years old because I needed like a job and it was crazy and I actually did telemarketing and I wanted to die I know I wanted I wanted to die because it was so I was like what am I doing like I am NOT that type of person and I tried to be competitive with myself and really do it but it just wasn't working and I got people but it was because I was hitting up like 400 people a day so I was like alright somebody's got to say yes and that's how I look at it with cold messaging eventually someone's gonna say yes and bite right so that's what that's what I mean by volume um, yes, exactly. That's very true, Jess. That's very true. Um, and I want to go back to what um, I forgot who it was that asked before about every lead or every like is a is a lead. Um, I look at every I don't look at it as a lead. I look at every like um, as just a like. I look at every comment as a potential relationship um, because at the end of the day, you'll always hear us say this is relationship uh, marketing and you know, that's really what network marketing is all about and I have seen you know so much success with just being personal and you know holding back and I told this to someone the other day and I forgot who it was um, God, I talked to so many of you in a day I'm sorry um, but I said something to, to someone the other day that something I remember from when I first started even just the first day I never looked and this is something that you guys maybe can take on board I never looked at um, someone liking or commenting or being interested as oh my goodness I have to get them right and I think that because I didn't do that I didn't my I changed my wording right my wording and my verbiage and everything else automatically changed with that because I didn't feel like I have to get this sale I have to get this person because especially in the beginning right in the beginning of this business or if we're in a lull for example we go through a phase where if that one person after like two weeks is interested we're like oh 
like, gotta get them, gotta get them. I'm so excited. And that's, and that's how it should be. We should be excited every single time. But when that happened for me, even in the very beginning, when I really, really should have been the most excited about sales, I was excited, but I wasn't, I never looked at that person as I have to get you. Otherwise, you know, my life is over type of thing. And I know that there are so many people um, in this business and other network marketing businesses that end up failing because they do look at that person in that way. And by doing that, they indirectly end up changing what they're wording and their, oh, you know, someone likes to post, I'll tell you in a second. Um, and they indirectly change their wording and their verbiage and how they're coming across in reaching out to that person or talking to them. And even if they don't mean to be, they end up coming across as desperate because they are, you know, they're putting out there their excitement, but their excitement is literally turning into, I have to get this sale. I have to get it. And that ends up ruining that sale. It just does. So if I could tell you anything, um, with the exception of cold messaging to the side right now, if I could tell you anything, change your mindset. Um, on your customers. I, uh, I had some of the Arizona team over at my house the other day. We had so much fun. And, um, and guys, I apologize for always talking about my hands. I'm Italian and I can't help it. So just deal with it. But, um, jazz hands. So anyway, we had them over and it was so much fun. It was amazing. And, um, I remember saying, uh, while they were over that there was, um, when it comes to customers and getting the sale and this and that, I don't ever, I always look at it as though I'm offering you something amazing. Like if you don't want the sale, that's fine. Somebody else will. And I move right along. Right. And that's how I was from day one. Like I know that that, and that's why I say that because I want you guys to know, because if that was, if I was on the other side, right, watching this video, I would say, yeah, but you say that now because you know, you, you get a lot of people and you have the success. You don't really need to worry about getting the customers. And I agree with you. However, I did do that when I was, when I was brand new as well. I just never, for some reason, I don't know why, um, but it worked. I never looked at them as, you know, like I have to get this sale. So I always looked at them as, all right, you don't want it. That's fine. There's plenty of other people that want it. No worries. You know how to reach me when, when you want it, because I know eventually you'll want it. And that's how I always left it. And I mean, true, true as day here, they always ended up wanting it, whether it was weeks from then or months from then, or even for a couple of them, like a year later. Um, but I never bothered. I never, I never bothered them. So, um, Kenya, I don't, I know that you just asked me something about, I think it was, what do I do about, um, how do I handle likes or what? Sorry. I'm sorry. If you could just type that again, please. That'd be great. If someone likes your post, yes. Okay. Okay, that's it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so if somebody likes my post, and it is numerous times, um, that already piques my interest. So I go into their profile and I look. And I look around, um, if they are, obviously we all know to steer clear of anybody that's a, another distributor, um, or B, somebody that's the leads person and all that stuff. But if they're a normal person, right, I'll look at their stuff and I'll see if they have no, um, no ties to any network marketing or, you know, unique or, or Herbalife or Thrive or anything like that. Um, I'll start looking through their stuff and I'll start liking their stuff. And I'll genuinely like their stuff. I mean, there's some people that I'll look at their pictures and I'll be like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I'll like it, like it. And then typically when that happens, they'll end up leaving a comment. And even if it's a heart, right? Because I know that some people just get lazy and they leave a heart. Depending on my mood, I will go ahead and um, leave a comment on one of their photos. And then after that, I'll notice, I'll remember, right? Who's liking the photos. And I said this to somebody the other day, and I'm glad that you asked this, Kenya. Um, when that happens and there's likes going back and forth, I will actually then, because at that point, I don't think it's cold messaging. I think at that point, and again, this goes back to me treating everyone as a friend. I will reach out to them in a DM. Um, I do. I, I don't block our team. Um, because I want you guys to obviously, if you need to take stuff, take it. Um, and I always want to make sure that, you know, I'm able to watch you guys too. Perfect. Um, and if they do, if there's likes going back and forth and we're kind of like playing this game back and forth here, eventually 
Um, if it's like two, three days later and I see that they're still liking stuff, I will go ahead and I'll reach out and I'll say to them, I'll make a joke. And this always works for me. I'll make a joke and I'll be like, why are you stalking me? Like, when are you going to buy these wraps? You've been liking these things. And I'll put like, LOL and a little face, you know, something to that effect. And if they, if they're friends, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I wouldn't, yeah. You don't have to block your friends. You know, I mean, you, you know who to trust. Um, but yeah, I'll make a joke and I will, I'll reach out in a DM or something and I'll, you know, sometimes I'll be like, girl, what are you doing? Like you're sitting here liking every post. You could be rapping while you're liking, you know, something like that. And I always make a joke about it because it takes that wall down. Um, so, and that seems to work for me. That's really the only time that I will genuinely reach out is when there, there are those back and forth likes, because I think at that point, like the doors open. Um, and it's just a matter of when you reach out saying the right stuff at the either way. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to tell you guys that cause it's been on my mind and, um, I've been getting a lot of questions about it and I had time cause Dan's still apparently getting our food. So I'm going to go and enjoy this crazy cold weather. Um, and I cannot wait to get to Tampa and see you guys. Um, I'm so so excited for conference and um, tomorrow is Tuesday so we will have our group call I think it'll just be um, a quick one and uh, to just kind of maybe talk about what's coming up with conference and uh, the new product and all that stuff I know it's supposed to rain I know yeah that was like when we were on the cruise we went to Mexico everything was beautiful and then all of a sudden like the whole time we're there it was just downpours in the middle of the ocean and it was it was ridiculous. I was like, I could have just stayed home. Um, but it was fun either way. So I can't wait for you guys to see conference, whether you are there live or you are watching it with a pay-per-view ticket. Again, you know, Dan yes, that's true. It does last only five. And it's usually at 3 p.m. 3 to 4 p.m. is when Florida rains all the time. I don't miss that, but it does pass. Um, if you're watching with a pay-per-view ticket, I don't agree with that. They made you guys pay, but Please, 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 if you are able to watch that, um, I want you, I want to be talking with all of you after we get back. So I am so, so excited. Anyway, have a wonderful day. Um, I know, I know I'm so excited. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. All right. Goodbye.